This is the DE1XL model of the Decent Espresso Machine. Now it comes in white and black. And as you can see, you can run it either on the tabletop or counter sunk. Now let me explain a little bit the various options and how it differs from our DE1 Pro model. So the first thing is that it's about four centimeters longer and the DE1 Pro model ends here where this black panel is. What we do with the Excel model is we extend it four centimeters further so that all the cables can go here and then they go into this hole here and come out the bottom. The advantage of that is that when you put this back panel on, which is magnetized, then all the cables are hidden. If you've got a machine that is either facing customers or it's in a kitchen island, this is a much tidier approach with the D1 Pro, this is what people see in the back. They see the cables and the wire tubes. So this is our way of cleaning everything up. Now with the tabletop version, it's common for people to have a hole cut out here for the tubes and electrical connections to go directly through the table and then to where they need to go. With the countersunk version, you'll see in a second that <clears throat> With the countersump version, which goes into a sink like this, the plumbing is in the front here. <laughs> Do that again, a bit heavy. With the countersink option, which is you put the espresso machine in here, this is where the front goes here and the tubes go out directly. Now, the reason that the tubing is in the front is so that the dirty water, which is here, has a clear, straight path. Now, that's preferable because espresso can be quite sludgy as it's going out the flush tube, and so it's better to have as straight a tube as you can have. If you are going countersunk and you're having the water come out the back, we do supply you with a 90-degree bend that goes from the front here all the way to the back. The D1XL model is made to be countersunk and it's just a little bit taller. It's about half a centimeter taller than the D1 Pro model. And you absolutely can put the Pro into the countersink. It'll be half a centimeter in, but more importantly, the back will still be visible and there'll be four centimeter gap in the back. So the XL model was specifically made so that it would work with that countersink. You may also notice that countersinking it lowers it quite a bit on, on the table, which is really handy in the sense that if you are at a cafe, you can have more eye contact, more interaction with the customer, or if you have it at home, it's set in and it's blocking less the view of your kitchen. So that's the idea there. <clears throat> the the idea behind this countersunk the idea behind this countersink came from a meeting I had with a big name Italian espresso machine company and they were drinking a bit and laughing about how many cafes that they had flooded with accidental leaks of their machine. Now, I'm a software programmer, I have been since I was 14 years old, and I have spread countless bugs around the universe. I'm very aware that my work as a programmer is flawed at times, despite my best efforts for it not to be. And so when we designed this espresso machine, Ray, who's the hardware engineer, but also a programmer, had very much the same philosophy, which is, let's try not to screw up, but if the unexpected does happen, let's make sure it has as little impact as possible. So this, while it's called a countersink, emphasis on the word sink. This is basically a sink with a drainage hole. And when you put the espresso machine into the sink, it means should anything ever leak inside here, it's all gonna get captured and it's all gonna come out of this tube. And that means that when you countersunk, when you've countersunk the machine, you've essentially got an insurance policy against anything going wrong in terms of water. Anything that's an open tap, I'm always afraid about leaving the freezer making ice on my home refrigerator when I'm not 
home during the holidays, and it's much the same thing. Anything that's an open tab is potentially a risk, and that's why we made the countersunk. We also think it just looks kind of nice to have this very sleek, modernist, minimalist look. As I mentioned, the back panel does come off. It is simply magnetized. And let me walk you through what the connections are in the back. So you've got power on off. You've got this plug here, which is going to power a pump or um, a valve that brings water into here. Now that is our catering kit, which is for water that needs to be pumped into the machine. Or it's our refill kit if you've got pressurized water, for example, from a reverse osmosis machine that will go into here. So a pump or a valve. Um, I'll take out of the boxes in a second to show what those look like. This cable here is a power cable and it powers that when the tank that's in here senses that it needs to get topped up with water. And the topping up happens automatically. If you countersink and you put it into a cart or a table, the refill kit and the catering kit both have brackets so they can be mounted to the underside and basically stay out of the way. It just becomes invisibly part of your plumbing. Let me lift this machine and turn it around. Okay. So here it is front facing and typically if this D1XL were used on a countertop and not plumbed in, you would use it with this drip tray here. And uh, I should have the white one. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll need to get the white one, uh, the white drip tray, and splice that in, because um, this is the black one. Um, or I'll just mention that. So this drip tray comes in white and black versions. If you get the white machine, you'll get the white drip tray. If you get the black machine, you get the black drip tray. And the unplumbed version, which doesn't have a hole here, is what comes with your machine when you buy it. When you buy a refill kit, you can get a black or white version, and it has a hole which you can see here, and there's the tube. Okay. A black rubber tube, which comes with the uh, drain kit, that's what this is called, goes through the hole that is in the countersink. And that's the hole for the countersink. Alright. Yeah. Okay. Another aspect of the D1 XL model is that the steam wand is considerably larger. It is meant to be able to drink, it is meant to be able to steam larger vessels like the 600 milliliter milk jug so you can make two drinks at once, whereas the D1 Pro comes with a much smaller steam wand which is really meant to make one drink which is really meant to steam one drink at a time. The steaming time is the same between the Pro and the XL. The only thing that differs is this larger wand here, which also is shaped like professional machines as opposed to the Pro, which is shaped more like a home machine steam wand. If you're coming from the professional world, you may be asking a question, which is, why are there not two and three group versions of the decent espresso machine? Why are they only making these one group models? Well, there's a very specific reason for that. 
These are light and they can be shipped all over the world really quickly. On average, it takes 2.2 days for a machine to come from us to anywhere in the US, for instance. So should a machine break, you will find that it is quite easy to lift the machine out and simply put it into a suitcase, send it out either for repair or for a swap. And that is our entire philosophy is the world of professional espresso machines has been dependent on local repair because their machines are so damned heavy. When you've got a two or three grip machine and two people have to lift it onto a pallet in order to send it somewhere, you're gonna have to send people out. And that's both really expensive and it means that um, they have to pass the cost onto that, onto you. They have to pass the cost and that means they have to pass the cost onto you as well of having a service fleet all over the planet. We're able to make a machine which is quite compelling, I'd like to think, and do all the repairs really quickly. So turnaround is typically 24 hours when we get the machine and it takes two days each way. So generally a repaired machine is out of your hands and back in your hands within a week because this machine is so light. It's also independent. If you have a two or three group machine and something goes wrong, typically the entire machine goes down. And with this, you'll have two or three machines, one goes down, the other ones are still working. Even better, we recommend that if you are a cafe, you have a plus one spare that you use for weddings and farmer's markets or what have you. And should something go wrong with one of your machines, you just swap it, send it out, and within a week, it's back again. And essentially, you're looking at a half hour to unplumb and plumb it back in and be back and running. So you don't have this dependence on, sorry, cafe closed until repairman shows up, which happens all too frequently. And if you are in the industry, you'll know that the average time between repairs is one month at a professional cafe. That's why they come very regularly every few weeks to fix things before they break because professional machines do break from the heavy use and you have to plan for that. Okay. Um, I've already shown that. I think that's the bulk of it. I've done it in a different order than I did in the previous one. Um, why don't I, let's go to the back here and I'll unplumb it and um, plumb back in. So let me show you what it looks like when it's fully plumbed in. I'll take it out and put it back in and you get an idea of that swap process. Why don't you come over here, Paul, so you can see. It's okay if you're in frame. Um, are you, okay, you're filming. You need to film that way. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Great. So I'm gonna take this back panel off. And here I've got power, power switch, power to the refill kit. This is the water intake here. This has to get lifted if you take the water tank out. And then this is the water coming in from the refill kit. These things here are the magnets. These are called standoffs that hold the back panel in place. So first thing I'll do is turn that off, unplug it, and then take that out. I need to get a screwdriver to do that. There is a little nub here which prevents this from coming out accidentally. This is not the right tool for this. There we go. goes out like that and then these things are on pretty good they don't come off by accident there we go these are all food grade silicone tubes okay. and at this point I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna take that off take the drip tray off and there you can see the tube and looking inside the countersink you can see where the tube connects to for water to go out if water ever spilled out of the machine, it would drain out of this tube. Now, generally what I do, 
the back. I just received a call. That's fine, <laughs> just hang up. Okay. Uh, <laughs> they're going to call back, I'm sure. Um, so generally what I do is I take out the wire tank by lifting up the back and pulling this forward, like so. And then I lift up the machine slightly, like that, and take the wire tank out. This is also something that's really worth doing uh, weekly if you're in a commercial setting because you do want to keep this clean. Now this is another advantage of it not being a boiler is that a boiler, there's all sorts of stuff accumulating inside the boiler, but you can't get to it, not directly at least, because the boiler's sealed. Whereas this, got the call refused? Yeah, but I can't get the screen back up, so it's kind of frozen on there. Yeah. All right, I'll just hold that for a second. <clears throat> Our camera B is frozen. Okay, you're back. Okay, thank you. So just get a shot of this water tank. And this is something that can go into a dishwasher and fully clean it, or you can spray it with some products and clean it. And this is made of porcelain, so you really can scrub it. You won't do damage. You can get it back to perfect cleanliness. Anyone who works in a commercial environment knows you have to be able to clean everything. You have to be able to take everything apart. So now the machine is ready to get lifted out. And it weighs about 13 kilos. And I've lifted out and I can go get another one or do whatever I need to. And this is the process in reverse now to put it back in. So I take it and I set it back in like so. Then with the group handle, I'll lift the machine up sideways and then slide the wire tank in. Set the machine down. Close that down. Now you need to make sure the tube goes. You need to make sure the tube goes into the hole. <laughs> so this is a little harder than it should be because we have the poster here. There we go. And the drip tray cover goes back on. Going back here. I've got a power cable that is going to get screwed in. And then the refill kit cable, which goes in there. I can turn that back on now. And then finally, the back panel clicks back on like so. That is an overview of the D1XL model. To summarize, it has the same internals as the Pro model, but a different steam wand. It can be countersunk, and it also has a back panel that hides all the electronics. It comes in a black and white model. Now, we also have a D1XXL model, which looks identical to the D1XL model, except that it has more power for making more steam faster hot water and such, and it's even more appropriate for a commercial setting. That D1 XXL model only comes in a 220 volt version. If you've got any questions about the D1 model, if you've got any questions about the D1 XL, please ask in the comments below and we will try to help you out. Thanks for watching. Okay, question? Is there a LAN connection? LAN? Yeah. Okay. So the question is, is there a LAN connection for firmware updates? The answer is no. The firmware updates are over Bluetooth. The connection between the tablet and the machine is via Bluetooth. The firmware comes in over Wi-Fi into the tablet as an app update. Okay. All right. Thanks for watching.